This is another Verona special report. A very good evening, everyone. Welcome to our special report on the assassination attempt of John, Donald J. Trump. As you know, the, that is the leading story all around the world. Uh, Donald J. Trump in a rally. He was shot at. Somehow he survives it. And uh, investigations are now underway as to what is going on. To, uh, tonight, uh, we want to bring you a lot of information from various sides and to give you an opinion and an understanding exactly um, how will this uh, translate uh, into the future as we move on uh, with regard to American politics and also global politics. Uh, but before that, let's recap as to what happened uh, during the day. Donald Trump had been at the podium for just a few minutes in Butler, Pennsylvania, the latest of so many campaign rallies. This one familiar, like all the others. And then it happened. Take a look at what happened. Watch and listen again. Take a look at what happened. Two pops, Trump grabs his ear, then falls to the ground. Then a flurry. Then what appears to be one more shot and the piercing screams. It's not clear at this point if he's been hit, how injured he might be. And all this is being broadcast live on American cable news. The podium microphone is still on. The Secret Service agents confirm the shooter is down. Let me get my shoes, sir. Hold that in your head. Bloody. So we gotta move to the front. And then they begin to move the former president. Watch out. It was an attempt to assassinate Donald Trump. It had failed. And he recognized the need for immediate defiance. He was then bundled into his vehicle and away. The still images capture this extraordinary moment for America. Trump under fire, vulnerable, defiant. Quickly, a statement from the former president came. I was shot with a bullet that pierced the upper part of my right ear. I knew immediately that something was wrong in that I heard a whizzing sound, shots, and immediately felt the bullet ripping through my skin. Much bleeding took place, so I realized then what was happening, the former president said. And then, from his political foe, from President Biden, a hastily arranged address to the nation. But the bottom line is that the Trump rally was a rally that he should have been able to be conducted peacefully and without any problem. But the idea, the idea that there's political violence or violence in America like this is just unheard of. The political reverberations from all this are hard to judge right now. They cannot be underestimated, but the immediate focus is the investigation. The witnesses will provide important information for the FBI, and they are now leading on it. I was in the set of bleachers, the very far left of the podium, where Donald Trump was speaking, President Trump was speaking. Um, you know, I was there with friends. I heard several gunshots. Um, the man beside me uh, suffered a gunshot wound to the head, um, was instantly killed, um, fell to the bottom of the bleachers. Another woman was, looked like she got hit in the forearm or hand. And then at that point in time, uh, it was rather chaotic at that point. You don't like the guy, don't vote for him. Don't kill him. We love the guy. We're going to vote for him. You know, I mean, what, what, what is up with his violence? I mean, it's just, it's just terrible. From Sky News analysis of the images from the scene, here's a picture of what happened. This is the spot where Donald Trump was speaking. The red zone is where the crowd was. It's thought the gunman was on this roof, beyond the secure perimeter of the rally, about 150 meters from the former president. This evening we had what we're calling an assassination attempt against our former president, Donald Trump. It's still an active crime scene. 
As I mentioned, we have a number of agents on scene. We also are working closely with other federal agencies, our state partners, and our local police partners as well. On the roof of an adjacent building is the weapon thought to have been used. Authorities say they've identified the dead gunman as a 20-year-old male, a young man who tried to change the course of American history. It will take time to process the impact of all this, the consequences for America and a society already fractured. Well, as you saw, that is exactly what unfolded uh, in uh, Pennsylvania. As far as we know, the information that has been provided by the FBI, the Federal Bureau of Investigation, they have identified the 20-year-old uh, as Thomas Matthew Crooks, and investigations are currently underway as to what was his motive? Why did he actually attempt this? If he's a Republican, was he a person who actually hated Trump, or was that, uh, is there another story? I'm, I'm pretty sure there's another story behind this entire episode. Um, I want to get reactions uh, for that. Uh, I've invited back into the studio um, our former Foreign Minister, uh, Dr. Sarat Tamrugama. Welcome uh, to the program. We've been talking a lot about uh, the United States U.S. election last time when you were here about a couple of weeks back, um, soon after the debate. Yes. Um, yes. At that time, Trump seems to be right on top uh, after the debate. Yes. And uh, here we go. Uh, there's an assassination attempt uh, on the opposing candidate uh, against the incumbent. The incumbent uh, president who is vying for a second term seems to be not in a good position um, in, uh, polling wise. But um, Donald J. Trump has been targeted and he survives this assassination attempt. How do you see this entire episode uh, um, unfolding in, in America? Political violence. Sri Lankans are very much uh, uh, well known uh, with regard to political violence. But uh, how do we see this uh, entire episode unfolding from America? You know, Mahesh, the French have a word or a phrase called deja vu. <laughs> deja vu means we've seen this already. Yeah. This is a recurrent nightmare in American politics because you don't know at, one, at what time the trajectory of American politics can be changed by the use of violence. Of course, the classic one, which is there <clears throat> in the textbooks, is the assassination of Lincoln. Yeah. Uh, that, has, that has been imprinted into the minds of all Americans. But what was most moving was, of course, the assassination of uh, JFK, of uh, John, of Jack Kennedy, which is burnished in the minds of almost everybody who lived at that time. So that in America, uh, a favorite question is, where were you when JFK mm. was shot? You find this in literature, in discussions and so on. So now again, that horrible nightmare has come back very strong into any discussion of uh, American politics. Now you have to take it in the context of uh, what has gone on during the last couple of weeks. Mm. We discussed the, the debate. debate. And since then, it became clear that the Democratic Party itself was having very strong doubts about the continuity of President Biden. Bloomer after Bloomer was uh, seen, though of course the Democrats felt that uh, those performances were better or minor lapses compared to, of course, the, the biggest debacle of the debate. So then we come to Pennsylvania. Yeah, well, Pen battleground state. Battleground state. Pennsylvania is a key state in which normally the Democrats do very well. And both parties are vying for the Pennsylvania vote. We've always discussed about the, the blue fortress, yeah, yeah, yeah. the rust belt. The areas where earlier, historically, uh, the Democratic Party was very strong and had its own uh, strong organization right down to the grassroots. So Pennsylvania was a price and uh, as seen by several things. I think within the last week, Biden himself visited Pennsylvania. Even uh, Jill Biden, the first lady, is currently there in yes, Pennsylvania. Yes, she's there. 
they, they are making a strong bid for Pennsylvania. And even during Biden's earlier tenure, uh, he made special visits to Pennsylvania uh, to seek the support of the, uh, the labor unions and so on. And in fact, tomorrow, the Republican Party is having its convention also in Pennsylvania. In Milwaukee. In Milwaukee. So it's a very key time, crucial time, when this uh, intervention was made through this shooter. Now, I think everybody held their breath yeah. because in the present ethnic and what is now becoming a favorite word, identity politics. Yes. When you begin to analyze uh, American uh, uh, politics, uh, European politics, and even Indian politics. The interests of individual groups, classes, castes, interest groups, they all now come into the fore as identity politics. So identity politics uh, has become a very major item in the American political agenda. And everybody held their breath because if it was a black or a uh, sort of <coughs> Hispanic, all sorts of conclusions would have been drawn. Every time there is violence in America now, the question of which identity comes yes. in is... Even right important. now, that is one of the conversations. And I see, I, I saw during the entire coverage, uh, for, especially from democratic-leaning uh, media organization, MSNBC, NBC, ABC, all these news uh, channels, except for Fox News, I think everyone else, uh, yes. liberal-leaning. Yes. Uh, all these uh, channels were very much swift to jump on uh, the bandwagon to say that he's a Republican. Yes. He's a Republican. He is registered as a Republican. Yes. Uh, but nobody was uh, very clear about the fact that you can but right now we uh, know um, uh, doctor that a lot of Democrats registered Democrats are voting Trump uh, because they are not happy with the economy and they have been outspoken about it so nobody was explaining to the public saying okay he might be a Republican uh, a person who has been registered but what what does he identify right now does he does he hate Trump uh, does he, uh, you know, does he have a, a thing against the Republican Party? What was his narrative? None of that explained, but that identity uh, persona came into play and everybody uh, jump on the bandwagon to say, hey, look, 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 he's, he's a Republican. Yes, that's true. And uh, that, is, that is dangerous, isn't it? Yes, but even before you come to the political divide, there was the ethnic problem. Yeah. For example, the ever-present fear that it is one of the either... Uh, a black or a Hispanic behind it would have had various other yeah, immigration. Im implications. Yeah. Immigration, because Trump has always been saying, due to this lax policies of Biden, opening up the frontiers and allowing large scale migration, that even lunatics, uh, rapists, criminals were coming across the border and spreading out into all parts of the US. And because of that quota system, where the immigrants were being distributed along the different states. Mm. Even states like New York and now Pennsylvania, uh, which were generally liberal and pro-democratic states, are having second thoughts. Uh, I, I want to take a short commercial break uh, uh, right now. Uh, we've been uh, talking about the shooting um, at, at the Trump rally that, that made uh, uh, a news uh, headlines all around the world uh, that basically said that there is an assassination attempt. The FBI is now investigating the, this entire episode as an assassination attempt of the pre uh, former president, uh, the 45th president of the United States of America. This is our special report. We'll be right back. If these pictures are what they appear to be, if that is a shooter deceased on top of that building 150 metres away from the, the rally venue, if that is uh, the shooter who discharged uh, the bullets um, that, that led to the incident inside that rally venue, there will be questions asked about 
where the Secret Service security perimeter ended, if this building was outside that secret, uh, that secret Service perimeter, and if it was outside, why was it outside? Just to reflect uh, again that press statement from the United States Secret Service, they say that at approximately 6.15pm, a suspected shooter fired multiple shots toward the stage from an elevated position outside of the rally venue. U.S. Secret Service personnel neutralised the shooter, who is now deceased. U.S. Secret Service quickly responded with protective measures and the former president is safe and being evaluated. One spectator was killed, two spectators were critically injured. This incident is currently under investigation and the Secret Service has formally notified the Federal uh, Bureau of Investigation. Also just getting a, a statement now from the Secretary uh, of Homeland Security who says that the U.S. Secret Service... Uh, Director Cheetal and I have briefed President Biden on today's shooting in Pennsylvania. Uh, this statement goes on to say that the Secret Service are working with law enforcement partners to respond to and investigate the shooting. We condemn this violence in the strongest possible terms and commend the Secret Service for their swift action today. But these are, are quite stunning pictures now that we're seeing these uh, helicopter pictures above uh, a building in Butler County, Pennsylvania, still unconfirmed as, as of yet to what they show, but they do apparently show uh, a man or a, a person deceased atop that building, possibly the elevated position from where those shots were fired inside uh, to the inside of that rally perimeter where Donald Trump was holding, um, holding that rally. So uh, potentially very significant uh, indeed, if these pictures do show what, what we think they may. Welcome back, everyone, to a special report on the assassination attempt of Donald J. Trump, the 45th president of the United States of America and the presumptive nominee of the Republican Party for this year's presidential election. A uh, lot of information uh, coming out at this moment, and they are sketchy. Uh, we, from now, to months to come, we will be talking about this entire episode that occurred. Donald J. Trump, somehow, um, he survives this assassination attempt, and I'm pretty sure um, a lot of people, this would definitely have an impact in the upcoming presidential election. Um, polling wise, he's doing very well. Uh, we want to understand would this translate into a, 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 you know, a different set of um, numbers for Donald J. Trump. We saw the same thing happening uh, in the past for um, former President uh, Ronald Reagan uh, in his first attempt when he was coming out from the uh, Republican National Convention. He basically was also shot at, but he survived that. And that particular election, it was a landslide. Um, I think it was against Mondale. Um, yes, yeah, Walter Mondale. But yeah, exactly. Um, former Foreign Minister Do Dr. Sarada Murugame is with me. Um, doctor, how would this actually translate? Because political violence is not something that Americans are very happy uh, to be identified with. Uh, they want to talk, you know, we can have really hard uh, conversations without violence. That is what they keep uh, telling the world and we don't see a lot of political violence. But this particular campaign was very different. You see their opponents being taken, dragged into the courts and, and we basically what we see in this part of the world is what we saw in America and now an attempt to assassinate. Uh, how do you uh, translate this in, uh, you know, as the campaign moves on? Well, firstly, the entry of Trump has changed the political landscape of the United States. Usually, the two contenders from the Democratic Party and Republican Party were very much mirror images. They were very, not very much of a difference because they all came up through the political system, went to the convention, uh, thought they could uh, make a run for the presidency, and uh, they were put out as their candidates. And the voting blocks were more or less predetermined. There were the democratic states and the republican states. And, uh, a strategy had to be worked out so that you can have a winning combination. But once Trump entered the scene, all those bets were off. Yeah. Uh, he was able to attack 
particularly the basis of the Democratic Party. We already talked about the Rust Belt, yeah. or what was called the Blue States, which were traditionally democratic states, but have now come into a stage where they are must-win states. Whoever wins those states gets the presidency. It was particularly significant for the Democrats because they are losing a grip on what was traditionally their area of operations. And the figures were slowly moving in Trump's direction, particularly after the after the debate, you find that governors of these yeah, uh, states, calling uh, yeah, Biden to uh, drop calling drop out. Bi Biden now to drop out because when the presidency is lost, it's a clear indication that their governorships, senatorships, and congressmen also come into jeopardy. Uh, uh, so, just I want to yeah. mention that. So that uh, with the entry of Trump, I think a certain element of I think you also mentioned that element of personal hostility, mm. uh, almost a private uh, enmity has come on the scene. <laughs> that uh, was not there in the past. No, not to say that uh, uh, you're old, but uh, you m would have really uh, remembered the uh, election of Ronald Reagan. Uh, and at that time, he was also an outsider. He was an actor who yes, came to yes, be a politician. Yes. Uh, and, and at that time, the Republican Party, the convention on politics of that time was thrown out of the window. And we mm -hmm. see a similar situation with Donald Trump. Um, how do you compare that uh, to a situation do you see now? Uh, after that assassination attempt of Ronald Reagan, and a landslide for him uh, during the election. I think he almost won all 51 states. Yes. Uh, but here, do you see a similar situation for Donald Trump, or is that is that the narrative going to change as we move on? Well, Ronald Reagan was a one-off chance because he was so popular. He had actually he started out as a Democrat yeah. and crossed over and became. And even a, Donald Trump started yeah, out as, as a Democrat. Democrat. Yes. Yeah. So and he he became the. Uh, Republican candidate and once he was there he actually was the more liberal of the two contenders his contender was Goldwater Goldwater he advocated nuking everybody you know dropping the atom bomb so once Reagan though he came from the right he came as the Republican candidate most of the Republicans could and also most of the neutral people could gather around him and he was very popular as a person. This, this event would unite the Republicans to stand behind Donald Trump as the candidate for this upcoming election. I think so. This will, this will merely put the seal on what is already a reality. Uh, the convention uh, was there merely to anoint yeah, yeah. their leader, you know, not to offer him any challenge. That's why the focus of interest came on to who's going to be the vice president. And you can see Trump played it very smart. Yeah. He, up to tomorrow, or up to the convention. I think up until Tuesday or Wednesday. Yeah, Wednesday, he has not disclosed the names. But several names he has thrown up and said they're all very qualified. So uh, the interest went there. Nobody was going to say that uh, Trump is being challenged for the main slot. The interest was in the who VP. was going to be his VP. Because again, the question of the VP for the Democratic Party is also now a live issue, you know, because once, if by any chance Biden steps down, then there's another problem. Kamala Harris. Kamala Harris, <laughs> who's, who's polling, is He's much less than <laughs> even, even Biden. But of course, since this debate started, her recent polls have been climbing up. So they have a real issue there. But uh, as far as the Republicans are concerned, it, it seemed easy, easy movement for them. With the nomination of the uh, vice president, but this will probably accelerate that process. Now you are a seasoned politician. You know what has been happening all around the world, and you've seen many political figures uh, come and go. Uh, how do you assess Donald J. Trump uh, as an individual? Because for me, um, this guy comes out of the woodwork. He's a well-to-do uh, businessman, uh, comes into the political stream, gets blackguarded like 
treated like in the media as as a dog because that's how much uh, the liberal media ridiculed him somehow he was never given the chance or the the uh, at least a little bit of uh, doubt saying that he might win the presidency he was r completely written off from from the liberal media saying he will never become the president there are videos on youtube you can see how how a lot of people have been saying donald trump will never be the president then he was impeached twice then he was uh, indicted, uh, then convicted, now, uh, you know, basically shot at. Every single person, I mean, like this, this, this character called Donald Trump, everything they throw at him, this guy takes it and makes his polling numbers to go up. This is, a, this is a guy that, this is the character which we have never seen in, in, in recent history all around the world. Yes, he's a fighter. He's not only a fighter, he's a media savvy, personally a media savvy uh, leader. Uh, for example, his use of social media. Because when he came, uh, first time, the, the liberal media went for him, as you mentioned. Yeah. You see, for a long time, he had an open battle with the media. Normally, uh, presidents try to play it safe by not trying to take on the media. But from the very beginning, except for Fox News, all the other what are called the liberal uh, media channels were strongly against him. But he never succumbed. From the very beginning he went on saying that this is fake news, uh, this cannot be believed, uh, this is all prejudiced news. And he gave as good as he got. Yeah. So I think uh, in, in an America which is going through a very, very difficult time because the American century is over. The reality of the global situation has yet to create a situation in uh, America where they can respond positively. Now, Biden has completely lost his way. Yeah. You can see that, uh, uh, for example, uh, when there were inner discussions regarding this NATO meeting which they <laughs> concluded, <laughs> apart from Biden's ga gaffes, what were they trying to do? They were trying to foreclose the situation in Ukraine and Israel, even if Trump wins. That was the idea, to commit, to set in motion certain things that even Trump could not reverse. That was the whole point of this NATO exercise. I want to get uh, your reactions uh, as to how this, uh, this campaign, as it moves towards uh, the next chapter, uh, would impact the global, um, global effort, global politics per se. Uh, but before that, let's take a short commercial break. You're watching our special reporter on the assassination attempt of John, uh, Donald J. Trump. The protest didn't work, you got elected anyway. The impeachment didn't work twice, obviously. Um, indictment is not working. Your poll numbers go up. When they raided Mar-a-Lago in August yeah. of last year, your numbers went up. Um, they can indict you 20 times and it's not gonna, you're not gonna lose the Republican primary because of that. Well, so it like makes it look even more ridiculous. I mean, the four indictments and maybe there'll be more. I don't know. These people are crazy. But they're counterproductive. So if you chart it out, it's an escalation yeah. is what I'm saying. Yeah. So what's next after, you know, try to put you in prison for the rest of your life, that's not working. So like, don't they have to kill you now? I, th I think the people of our country uh, don't get enough credit for how smart they are. I, and I, I'm not sure I would have said this 10 years ago, but they get it, you know? They yeah. really get it. When somebody gets indicted, your poll numbers go down. When somebody gets indicted, you announce, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I'll be leaving to spend time with my family and to fight for the rest of my life on this stuff. But you're out of politics. I got indicted four times. All trivia, nonsense, bullshit. It's all bullshit. It's horrible when you look and, and you look at what they're doing. Uh, the boxes hoax, I'm covered by the Presidential Records Act. I'm allowed to do exactly that. He's not covered and he's got 25 times the number of boxes. And he's got them stored in Chinatown. He's got them stored in a flimsy garage underneath his Corvette. Uh, at Penn, and by the way, at Penn, he gets millions of dollars. China pays this guy millions of dollars. See, I think he's the most corrupt president we've ever had. 
And he also has the distinction of being the most incompetent. And I believe both. I mean, he's both incompetent and corrupt. So and I, I actually believe he's compromised because China knows so much about him. They know where the money comes from. They know where it is, who paid it, and they probably paid it. Well, that was a clip from, uh, t- uh, from, from an interview uh, where Tucker Carlson did a few months back, uh, actually on the night of uh, the Republican first primary that occurred. And uh, he, there, as you, as you saw, he asked a question. They will throw everything at you. The next thing he, they will do is try to assassinate you. How, how would you feel? And that's the answer that was given by Trump. Uh, this is something that I think a lot of Republicans were expecting to happen. But as you saw in American media, they were very swift to point out the fact that the shooter is a Republican registered voter. But, you know, as we move on with the investigation, we will get to know. Uh, as to what the reality of that individual is. He's just 20 years old. So that po- uh, b- brings another question as well. Dr. Sarat Tamulugama, former foreign minister, is here with me. Uh, doctor, uh, let's ponder upon that. 20 year old takes an AR uh, uh, automatic rifle, goes on, a, on, a, on an attempt, on a mission to kill the the nominee of the Republican Party, I mean, there are only this uh, uh, binary politics in, in America, so the, uh, the candidate, the opposing candidate, how can an individual, a 20-year-old, I mean, usually you see all those uh, assassination attempts, the, the people who were trying to assassinate, they were in their uh, 40s and 50s and, you know, in, in later stages of their life. Now 20-year-olds are taking guns and coming at and trying to do uh, things like this. This is a very scary premise. No, this raises a very big issue uh, in American politics and also in American society. That is the question of gun control. Because today, the using of guns has gone completely out of control, gone berserk as far as America is concerned. All these guns can be just bought across the counter. And only last week, one of the channels had an innovation by some of the states where just like you get a ice cream mm. or a chewing gum, you could go and put your money and press a button and get all the ammunition you want. It has come to a stage where the country is divided on the question of gun control. But America is, a, is basically a country with the cowboy mentality. Yeah. It's a fun, frontier mentality yeah. is there. You know, that's the story of Kissinger, what he yeah. called it, the lone cowboy yeah. riding into the sunset. This is burnished into the American memory. Everybody is very much, in the, in, certainly the older people, the more conservative people, are desperate in not trying to have any type of gun control. They oppose it. It's a big political issue. Uh, and basically, Republicans are for free use of guns. Yes. Liberalizing the using of guns. I think that would have been one of the reasons it would have been easy to bring a gun into that particular rally because uh, Republicans believe in carrying arms and, and they uh, vigorously defend, uh, exactly. I think it's the Second Amendment. Yes, it's, it's, it's their sort of theme which they have appropriated for themselves. And uh, Obama, actually in fairness to Obama, he tried some sorts of control but he was blown out of the water. He just couldn't yeah. proceed with that. The second one is another interesting uh, aspect of this deja vu. Again, we are coming to the talk of a lone gunman. Mm. You know, the lone gunman after Kennedy's death. That was again part of the American memory. You know, the, whether the, what was called the single bullet theory and the lone gunman. There's a huge debate as to whether this type of assassination of Kennedy could have taken place with one shot or two shots with a man like a gun by one man. So here again we see all the evidence tending towards the lone gunman theory. This will again reignite this idea of a lone gun. So a lone gunman with a highly ideological situation where people are angry with each other openly they are talking about possible assassination and when you can go and buy a gun from any place, then you have a very explosive situation. So gun control, lone gunman, single shot, then, all these are, all these are 
becoming very uh, vital issues now. Doctor, that, that begs a question for me. Now, the, uh, the age of this individual, Thomas Matthew Crooks, 20 years old, uh, social media plays a very uh, pivotal uh, role in, in, in shaping the minds and uh, mentalities of, of, of our younger generation. For a 20-year-old to uh, take a gun, knowing very well that it will end his life yeah. because uh, uh, you know he'll get caught. Not, he's never going to go, go scot-free. 20 years, he decides this is not this is enough for me. I need to do something that is that that is you know um, newsworthy worthy for the rest of the world. Now. How can a person's mentality be such, you know, completely defamed in such a manner where they don't have, they think that this is it. There's no other way. There's negotiations or talking or having sharing ideas is, is no longer valid. You need to go to violence. Yeah, but here, we still don't know yeah. what, what, what the real situation is. We have the objective uh, reality of a shooter. He has been shot dead by the authorities. Uh, now a lot of investigation will have to yeah. take place as to the motivation, whether it is in fact a lone government or conspiracy. Normally, uh, the, the police inquiries prefer to think of it as a conspiracy. So we will have to see whether this is a lone government, whether there was a conspiracy, whether it was a major conspiracy or a small one. So lots of issues are still there to be, uh, to be revealed. We are running out of time, uh, Doctor, uh, the final few minutes. Um, in your opinion, how would this impact global politics and also the conversation on polarizing political opinions? Because that is something that is trickling down to the rest of the world. We saw that in France. We saw that in the United Kingdom. Uh, we see that in, in, in our conversations in this country as well. Polarizing opinions where the other side does not have the ability uh, to basically listen to the oppo uh, opposing side. Uh, this we see here in, uh, in America very well, and we see it here in Sri Lanka as well. What is your opinion? On well, that? my opinion is that the Biden administration, in particular, led by people like Jake Sullivan, went into an interventionist policy, intervening all over the world, either directly by warfare or by all sorts of internal machinations, diplomatic maneuvers to shake up the whole uh, global understandings the mutual trust that were necessary to keep the world uh, working as it were. Now that has been shaken up by this uh, Biden administration and the world was now looking at America, will there be a change and a change in this unnecessary interventionist and unsuccessful uh, policies that are being followed by America. America is under stress. They are getting competition from China, they are getting competition from the, U uh, from the, from the Russians, from Iran, from Saudi Arabia, it's a paranoid situation. So the world is looking carefully to see whether, why should we suffer for this type of uh, pathological situation. And in this, Trump plays a major role because whatever he has regarding domestic policies, I think he wants a safer world. So we are looking forward to this because the world wants a more rules-based, yes. more predictable, more negotiable world and we can't have an America which is cut loose and which is run by a man who's well past his prime. <laughs> um, well, we have to leave it at that. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Sarah Thamlugama, our former uh, foreign minister, for sharing his ideas with regard to this event that unfolded in America. Well, that's all the time we have for you uh, on our special report. But keep watching other Dharana 24 as we will continue to update you on the latest on this assassination attempt, what is going to come. Uh, from tomorrow onwards, the uh, Republican National Convention is there, <laughs> so there will be a lot of information that is coming out as well. Thank you for watching. Have a good night.